I'm Gary Sutton. Um, I'm a statistician uh, by background in the, from the, in the Scottish Government. Um, I spent 20 years as a, an assistant and a statistician collecting data from a lot of you um, in relation to um, looked after children, being one of them actually. Um, but I moved from that post last July to, to become uh, a tr an improvement advisor um, in training. I'm, not, I'm sort of currently learning the, the improvement science myself, which I'm going to regurgitate to you uh, today. Um, so the, I'm an improvement advisor on the Early Years Collaborative. For those that haven't heard of the Early Years Collaborative, um, this was a, a, a collaborative launched last October, um, trying to look at improving the outcomes for all children from conception to the start of primary school. Um, so it includes lots of children. Um, so that's just a bit of background, the collaborative, but I don't want to sort of dwell on it. What I'm going here to talk about today is um, the model for improvement, which is the model we've um, decided to use for the collaborative. Um, it's been used in the Scottish Safety um, Patient Safety Programme um, as well as an example in Scotland. Uh, about 2008 it started in reducing um, hospital acquired infections. And it's been successful, so it's a model we're using it um, in the early year settings, but it's the first time it's been used in a multi-agency approach. Um, so the world is watching us, we don't know if it's going to work, but we have got to all 32 CBPs um, signed up to at least try. Um, we had our first learning session back in the end of January, there were 750 people all in a room at the SECC. We have our second learning session in a couple of weeks. Um, and it's just basically a, 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 me a methodology for learning and sharing knowledge and, and testing um, potential changes that you think might work on a small scale. So you'll hear more about it as I go through this, these slides. So what is quality improvement and how to start? Just a quote here, um, quality improvement is a broad range of activities um, that providers can develop, implement and assess at small scale and identify those that work and that those that work well and implement them more broadly in order to improve practice. It's not basically, I think, how, we've, how people have worked in the past is we're all on a hamster wheel, we all have our day jobs and we're asked to improve and so we run a bit faster. And we might get a bit of improvement, but at what cost? Uh, quality improvement, the model we're, we, we're using is, is all about trying to make transformational changes. So it's actually not asking people to run faster on the wheel. It's all about asking them to stop, be reflective around where, what, where are the problems, what's not working at the moment, where could things be better if only, if only we um, could do what we, what we needed to do. And, 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 and do that. So it's a good analogy. It's all about trying to stop and think, actually, we can't improve a lot by working faster. It's, we need to make um, significant changes that's going to lead to an improvement. Quite a nice quote here is that every system is perfectly designed to achieve the results it gets. So the, the statistics the minister quoted earlier today, my old statistics, around the, the percentage of kids who are on home, home supervision orders for 12 months or more. Um, that's the system we've got. It's, it's designed to deliver that. It's, it's, not, it's not saying it's right, it's not saying it's wrong, but it's the system we've got. If we want to change it, then we need to work differently, do things differently in order to see that move. Research has shown as well that um, my old job, producing evidence, I used to link my looked after children data to the education data and produce the outcomes that show kids who are looked after at home have higher exclusion rates, lower attendance, and come out of school with very little qualifications and end up um, in the not in, not in an education, employment and training group. But it takes, 14, it takes 17 years to get 14% of that evidence into practice. So we're all about trying to improve the speed of that and trying to get the evidence actually into the practice quicker. No improvement model is perfect, but some are useful. And the model that we use relies on, on these three things. Having a clear and stretch goal, so this is not, like I say, a stretch goal to try and get people to think about uh, transformational change for a significant improvement, um, rather than just a one or two percent in, uh, improvement that makes people just run faster and work harder. A method, which is the improvement model, and then using predictive, iterative, um, small-scale testing in order to test our theories and ideas of what the changes could be. So what is the model for improvement? Very simply, it's, it's these three fundamental questions. Hopefully you can see them. There are handouts um, that will be handed out at lunchtime um, for those that can't. Um, first question is, what are we trying to improve uh, or accomplish? 
So having having your aim, so having a clear stretched aim around what you're trying to um, improve. How will we know that a change is an improvement? So measuring it. It's all about measuring it and evidence and um, whether things are working and improving. And what changes um, can we make that will lead to an improvement? So what are your ideas? What are your theories? What are your hundreds? What are answering those questions? If only this happened or if only we could do this. Um, what are your ideas around changes? And it's using the, the plan, do, study, act cycle to, to test those theories and ideas. At a small, starting at a small scale um, to test it and then start testing these ideas under multiple conditions to see is it, is it going to work? Is it going to make things better? <coughs> things better at scale once it's uh, getting to the point of, of um, implementing and spreading those ideas. So as I say, the aim um, should be aligned, it should be timed, and it should be numeric. So setting an aim of like, we always say uh, uh, how much, how good, how much by when, sorry. Um, so how much do you want to improve and when do you want to uh, achieve that by? As I say, this it should be unachievable by hard work alone. So it's trying to avoid people thinking they need to run faster and work harder. It's it's got to be a change to the system, and it's non-negotiable one set. So you set the aim, and it is an aim. It's not a target. This is also another challenge we've had on the earliest collaborative, because of the, you know the, the role of the government and producing targets that you're going to get judged against. The aims are meant to be. Um, ambitious and stretching um, as part of the earliest collaborative which made it hopefully quite clear to people that you know if they don't achieve what the aims are they're not going to get punished for it but it's meant to get get them to stop and think um, around how would we ever achieve that um, if, if we're going to so examples of a few aims um, for example in this arena these were just some things I made up um, to reduce the number of looked after uh, children who are looked after at home by 10% by the end of 2015. So you can see there's a how much by 10%, by when, by the end of 2015. Another one, maybe 90% of children who are looked after at home will not end up becoming looked after away from home by the end of 2015. Um, you have measures, um, measures within your aim, so all social workers will have fortnightly contact lasting at least an hour every with every looked after child at home by the end of 2014. So this gives you an idea of um, setting aims and measures. So how will we know that a change is an improvement? Before I move on, I think it's quite useful to show you a slide that sort of shows that what, what's been called the three phases of, um, of measuring um, and, and knowing where we're fitting with this. Um, they're not unique, obviously, it could be the same data, but data could be used for research, so we're trying to find out new knowledge. Um, you know, the growing up in Scotland study um, identifies new, new information. Um, my old job is probably more in the, was more in the green area, so it was more around collecting data once a year for uh, and judgment and accountability purposes to enable local authorities to benchmark their, their, their results against comparative authorities or Scotland as a whole. For improvement, it's, it is more around um, testing small and often, um, collecting just enough data, and the data is only used for improvement. So it is worth remembering, or just having bearing that in mind, that data for improvement um, is not for any sort of judgment or to um, find new information. It, it's, it's information that should help you identify whether you're um, the system is doing what you think it should be doing um, and delivering what it should be delivering every time for every child and every family. Aggregate measures alone do not need predictions about future performance or insights. Um, displaying data over time, um, which is a key for the, the, the data for improvement, using run charts, which is basically, um, I'll show you one in a minute, it's basically just a, a, a time series graph or control chart, um, similar, but they have. Um, upper and lower limits on it to, to assess whether there's how much the variation in the data there is. This, Because um, these charts allow us to make informed predictions and thus make changes to create different results. Uh, Dr. Demin, the guru of, of the improvement science back in the 1920s and 30s in the, in the manufacturing um, industry in America, um, when you have two data points, it's very likely that one will be different from the other. Very true statement. Very unlikely it will be the same. Right, a little bit of work for you, just a little bit. If, if you were presented with this chart, 
and your your cycle time was 70 minutes um, um, before you implemented a change. You made a change and you were trying to reduce your cycle time and the, the data after the, um, the change showed you had gone down to 35 minutes. Would you see that as an improvement? Hands up if you would. Few of you. Okay, but if I showed you the same data over three line graphs or run charts, if you wanted to call them that, um, you can see the first scenario is um, up to the change being made, that's your average of 70. I did a change and I now have my new, new level at 35. It's a little bit more random variation going on there, but it seems to have been the change has made an impact. So I would say that actually has made an improvement. The second scenario, it was improving anyway. The average is still 70 before the change and average of 35 after the change, but did the change actually make a difference? Questionable. The third scenario, the change did seem to make a difference, and quite, quite a dramatic difference, but as you can see, it's creeping back up again. So you've not held any gains. You've just had a knee-jerk reaction and improved something in the short term, but in the longer term, it's going back to what it was. And those, two, those three graphs all produce the same results of that aggregate graph of 70 and 35. But as you can see, plotting the data regularly over time shows whether an improvement has been made and whether it's been a sustainable change. <coughs> And that's an example of a run chart. A run chart should tell a story. So um, if you just plot the data regularly over time, use annotations to say what you did at certain times in, you know, in, in the process. So you can see uh, the first one, they, they did a change on uh, puddles. <coughs> Can't read that, this is fine. Puddles tried. Then a bit later on, they tried nursery start and lab changes a bit later on. And then patient moved into rooms. Doing all those four things has led to the achieving the, achieve the goal. So it's plotting the data, collecting data regularly and plotting it over time. So what are the fundamental questions for measurement? Um, first, first and foremost is how, how can you monitor the real-time behaviour of your current system and steer it to avoid crashes and maintain its operational reliability? Over time, where are the gaps in practice and indicate where the system needs to change, i.e. improve. And in, in your efforts to improve, what's working, what changes are improving, um, and are you on track to meet your aims? Seek use, usefulness, not perfection. We're not looking at big um, statistically significant samples um, of information. It could be just look at the last five or ten cases of children and see what happened with them, you know, and, and did what you think should be happening happen to those ten kids. That will tell you something. Imagine, the analogy I always think is think of your system as a flowing stream. If you're wanting to look at the water quality of that stream, you wouldn't just take one sample and go, yeah, the water's fine, because it might not be the next day or the next week. So it's take lots of small samples every day, every week, every month, to see is the system still doing what you think it should be doing. Measurement guides. The key measures should clarify the aim and make it tangible. It should keep it simple and be careful about not overdoing, overdoing process measures. You don't want to be collecting um, too much information because you don't want to over the burden of the system as a result of measuring. And balance measures. Um, so you use a set of balance measures. They're things that basically, if you um, make a change, you don't want to have an, an, an unintentional consequence. So, for example, if you had an aim of reducing the time children are on home supervision orders, um, and you are achieving that aim, but you, you, you might then have a, a readmission rate going up because children are coming back into the care system. So it's having that sort of rounded set of pictures around your measures. And that's basically what it is. So outcome is your voice of the customer. So that's your outcomes, what you're trying to improve. Your process measures, so the, the inputs within your system that should contribute to towards your outcome. And like I say, the balancing measures is what's, what's potentially um, going wrong as a result of our changes that you also need to be aware of. Sometimes they can be a good thing as well, but usually you see them in the light of like staff absences or, like I say, readmission rates and those sorts of things, cost. You should uh, try to understand the variation in your, in your data. So plotting your data over time, an example for me would be if I was wanting to say how long it took me to get into work every day. 
it, I would probably say on average about 15 minutes, but it would randomly fluctuate, sometimes 12 minutes, sometimes 16 minutes, sometimes 20 minutes. But there might be one day it's like, it takes me an hour, and it's understanding that variation, you know, that's what, I, what we would call an improvement, a special cause, you know, why did it take me an hour that day to get into work? It could be there's a traffic hold up, bad weather, um, the car broke down, whatever. So it's making judgments on understanding the variation of data and not reacting to special causes. Sometimes a special cause could be a good thing. Uh, for example, if turning that scenario the other way around, if I usually took me an hour to get to work, roughly, but one day it took me 40 minutes, you know, looking at that and going, why did it only take me 40 minutes today to do that? And learning from that and thinking, could I do that every day? So what changes can you make that will lead to an improvement. Basically, this is where you come to it. You're the experts. I'm not an expert in looked after children and the, and the system of what happens to children when they come into the care system. Um, but you can use literature if there's evidence to say what works, um, your experience, um, or even just hunches and theories. You might think, if only we did this, um, and it's just a hunch, and you want to test it. Be strategic and set priorities based on the aims feasibility, and avoid low impact changes. There's probably hundreds and one different things that you could potentially change, but are they really going to have a big impact on um, moving what we would call the big dot in your aim? So if you were trying to reduce the time children are, are on a home supervision order, is that, is that change, if you, if you get to a stage where you can implement it at scale, is it really going to do that, or is it just something that you would like, you know, it's nice to do? Um, but, so really think about your priorities around what changes you would want to make. The Improvement Guide is a book, uh, Langley et al, um, available from all good, books, all, all good bookshops. And it's good bedtime reading, nice and thick. Um, but this sort of goes into a lot more detail um, around um, the model for improvement. Producing a driver diagram is, is what's key for the model. A driver diagram is, some people use logic models, but this is what we use for the model improvement. So basically you, you have your aim, which is the single box um, that on the left hand side, and then you have your first primary drivers. Um, we're going to go more in this, what you're going to be doing this afternoon, so pay attention. Um, so basically, what the, what the what the sort of big things that will contribute to your aim so in your improvement. And then those primary drivers may have a series of secondary drivers. Um, I'll go through an example this afternoon with you before we set you off on producing your own. And then this is where you do your small scale testing, you plan to study app cycles. So this is where you think, all right, we're going to test something to see if that has an impact, to see if it works. And, and it, because our theory is if we do this and it works, we can implement it at scale and it'll have an impact on what we're measuring in our secondary drivers, which will have an impact on our primary drivers and which will ultimately lead to an improvement in the outcomes. Very simple way of thinking of things. So what is the plan, do, study, act cycle? Um, starting with a plan, basically it's thinking about what's your objective? So what's your objective of, the, of that test you know, that's going to contribute to the overall outcome? So this is your, if, if we're going to try this, we're going to, what, what's our question? We're going to try this, do something different with this one person, with this one child, one family. Um, what's your prediction? Do you think it's going to work? Do you think it's not going to work? Sometimes a plan to study act, maybe um, that actually is not going to work. We'll, we'll, go, we'll try it, but actually we don't think it's going to work. And that's actually all still learning. It's all about learning. Um, so let's try it. So that's, you get to the do. Let's try it. Let's see if it works. And then you studied the results. So, did you? What did what did you find from that one test? So, it's one social worker with one family, um, and they're, they're trying something different. What 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 happened? Did it work? And if not, what's next? Do, can you like, can you um, do the same test but on a slightly bigger scale, or do you have to refine your theory and test again with another family and another child? Um, it didn't work as well as it should. So, it's it's testing at small scale. Um, and get to a stage where you start, start increasing, when you get more confident that things will work, you start increasing your testing um, scale and hopefully get to a stage where you can implement. You only learn as quickly as you can test. And so testing once a year or having data once a year, not really going to lead to improvement. Testing monthly is probably a struggle. Um, 
So it's things, it, it's thinking about what can you actually test on a daily basis or a weekly basis, monthly, so, you know, if, 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 if that's the case, but it's all about rapid small scale tests. It's small, so the impact on the population as a whole is, is, is minimal, um, but it's all about you learn as quickly as you can test. So if you're thinking monthly, think about can you do it weekly or possibly daily. Here's an example uh, of, a, of using the plan do study app cycle. So say the aim was to eliminate queues in the airport security. And our theory is we'll separate the flows for people and bags as this will reduce the, uh, reduce the delays at the security stations. So the first test may be we're going to test this system, this change, this theory with one passenger at one security station. That small. We're just going to test it with one and see what it tells you. If it works, you move up to cycle two. You think, okay, now we'll test the system with one passenger but at all the stations. So say there were four different stations. We test it on one passenger because what worked at one station may not work at another station. So that's the second plan to study out cycle. If that seems to work, you then can move up to level three and think, okay, now we'll test the system with every 10th passenger. So you're doing 10% sample um, at all the um, at all the stations to see if that works. If that works, you can move up to cycle four, test with all passengers but one day. So you're, still, you're just testing it on one day because there might be things throughout the day that stops things working. It's all about learning and refining and testing small and building, those, building that learning into your next um, cycle. And ultimately, the aim is to implement your new process, of, say, across your authority. Um, and then where spreading comes into it is whether that, what you've implemented within your own local area is, is, is potentially transferable to another, another area, where, whether they can you know, take it as it is or can take it but tweak it to suit the way they're structured or how they work. Um, but it's all about sharing that learning. Um, so when you get to the implementing and then spreading. You can also run multiple cycles of PDSA, so you could run different tests within different stations to try different ideas. So it's not always just a linear process, but obviously at that point you, you learn from each, each test and eventually get to a stage where you might want to combine all that learning um, to, before you, to implement it as a standard across um, all these settings in this case. Uh, and that's just uh, another way of showing it. So you're testing small in one unit um, with one, um, one person, one patient. Um, and then ultimately you get to, uh, hopefully get to a, name, a position where you can um, implement it, say, within your locality. And then ultimately spread it to the entire uh, system, so across Scotland. So that's how I see that chart. Um, this slide is all about just trying to highlight you should only standardise what's standardisable and you can only control what you can con control. Um, so for example if you had say four social workers, there may be four social workers, um, all do their own thing, do, do, do what they need to do but do it all in their own way, but how reliable is that? Um, so can you ever get to a position ideally where actually all social workers would do it the same way to reduce that variability in whether whether it's just a bit of luck as to which social worker, say for example, you, you have as to whether um, they're going to um, do what the system is expecting them to do. So as I say, the, the key definitely is to always think, start really small. You know, it's, so, it's actually a hard concept to, to get in your head, but you start with one area, with one worker, and with one service user. And we have a ratio of like a one to three to five, and that's your sort of scaling up as you're running through those, those ramps on the PDSA side. And before you get to a stage of saying, right, we're, we're confident it, it works under many different situations, we're at a stage now where you can implement this change. That's a PDSA feedback form which you don't really know, need to know. And just to end on, uh, do one brave thing today. <laughs> that's me.